All right, Shalom Israel. This is Brother Awarba coming back to you again with another lesson. Um, before I kick it off, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakwa Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, who will well. Peace and salutations to you, uh, you humble, hopeful elect that are out there doing this work in, in hopes to get saved, man. Okay? In sincerity and truth. And also who are hoping to uh, elect the house of David, man, so we can get the hell out of here. All right. So as you can see on this, I've been doing um, a small little part lesson, three part lesson. This is part three of it called Keep, Keep Not Company. OK. And so in the last previous um, previous lessons, I showed some examples of, you know, what to watch out for and what the scripture said about it, you know. And so this one, I'm going to focus more on. You know, not only what will happen in that situation of you keeping the wrong type of company around you, but also what it talks about as far as when you're dealing with, you know, somebody that is a potential love interest, you know, as well. So hopefully out through the spirit, it's going to be edifying lesson and uh, we're going to keep pushing. All right. So the first thing I want to do is talk about, you know, when you keep in bad company, uh, and what can possibly happen to you, you know, being a part of a body, man. Keeping people around you that mean you no good, something is bound to happen to you every single time. The Most High is just not just going to let that ride. He's not going to let it ride. He never has, and he never will. He didn't let it ride back then, and he damn sure ain't going to let it happen in 2018. Okay? So, what I mean by this is we're going to take a look at what happened um, in the book of Galatians, okay, second chapter. We're going to look at the report or the account of what happened with Paul and uh, the chief apostle, man. okay? All right, so this is Galatians 2, second chapter, and I'm going to start at verse 1, and then we're going to get the point, okay? So it says, Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach amongst the Gentiles. Okay, so for the record, the Gentiles are going to be the Israelite foreigners. Okay, these are going to be Israelites, okay, who have left or never knew or were not following the customs of um, the circumcision. Basically, the law, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay. So this is what we would call a Gentile, all right? Let's keep reading. But privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain, okay? But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, who came privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Hamasiach, Yahweh Shai, Hamasiach, that they may bring us into bondage. Yeah, fuck niggas, that we have still to this day, people that creep in unaware, man. Agents, okay? People that are really not sincere about this truth, but are trying to sneak in so that they can get information on us and get us caught up with Esau, okay? Let's just let that be out there like that. All right, I'm going to continue. And it says, verse 5, To whom we gave place by subjection, know not, for our, know not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you, but of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me that yeah, the Most High accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, meaning the uncircumcision, so that means that Paul had to go out and speak to the Gentiles, who was calling the people that weren't in the, the know, that didn't keep the law, statutes, and the commandments. Okay? Committed unto me as gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So Peter was, he had basically what was going on with this one, breaking it down, was Peter had, he went out to the churches that already knew the truth. 
and was giving them gospel, giving them encouragement, you know, keeping them on point. And Paul was giving the, uh, the, uh, basically the non-believers or the Israelite foreigners. Okay. So now that we have understanding of that, let's keep it moving. Verse eight, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to, uh, to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So they both loved, you know, they both were talented in what they got called to do. Okay. Whether it be to, you know, you were good at talking to people that was already in the truth versus people that weren't. Okay. In verse nine. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and unto the circumcision or unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. All right. Verse 10, only, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. But here's the point right here. All right. Let's not get lost in the sauce. Here's the point. Let's lock it. Hold on a second. I'm at work, work on my lunch break. But spirit compelled me to get this lesson out, so I'm going to do what I'm told. All right. Verse 10. It said, or verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. So he called Peter out, man. He called him out face to face. And here's what happened. For before that, before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Okay, so basically what he was doing was being a damn hypocrite, man. Okay, he would be out there preaching this, that, and the other, and don't be, don't be like such and such and such and such. Don't be like these people. But yeah, you sitting over there, you eating with them. Okay. Verse 13. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. And in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all. He called them out in front of everybody, man. Okay? Open rebuke is better than secret love. Okay? So Peter was going off, man. All right? He said to unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews. That's right. You see? So if you out there being, you know, you you around the Akeon woman and you, you know, you're supposed to be, you know, this brother that's on point, you you following the law, statutes, commandments, this, that, and the other, you know, you preaching, you teaching your ass off, and you you this super hit you super Israelite on the weekends or when you around Jake. But then when you get out there in the world, you somebody else, the most high will expose you, man. All right. The most high will expose you. Straight up. And he will call you to the carpet, man. So why don't you just be straight up right from the jump? Okay, because this is not a light thing. This is not something just to take lightly, man. This is not a fad. This is not a fraternity. Okay. This is not a sorority. This is not something to where you can just, you know, be a part of and go, you know, if you want to do all that stuff like that, then go, you know, go join a social club, man. All right. YMCA is good for you or, you know, some other thing that they got out there. OK, but this is for this is for salvation. This is for salvation. You feel me? OK, so like, yeah, I missed my spot. That was pretty much the point on that anyway. Okay. So I'm just going to roll with the spirit. I got people texting me and all that and other. They can fucking wait. Okay. So the next thing that I want to deal with is the scripture um, that people in the church generally you go to as far as, uh, you know, when it comes down to dealing with people. It's a scripture that a lot of people hear. And it's 2 Corinthians, um, the 6th chapter and the 14th verse, which is the be unequally yoked scripture. 
all right so of course you know we're talking about just you know not keeping you know keeping bad company or keep being around you know people that don't believe or being around people that are not in the faith okay so what does it say about people that you know that you, you deal with in, in a relationship fashion well the christian church will come and they'll grab the scripture to tell you don't be unequally yoked with somebody which is basically talking about marriage okay well let's read the scripture it says second corinthians 6 and 14 it says be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath the righteous will have righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath the light with darkness okay and what concord has Yahweh with Belial or with part he had or, or what part hath he that believeth in an infidel okay so basically what that's talking about is talking about you got to remember who Paul was who Paul was talking to at this time man Okay, he was talking to the church of Corinth. He was talking to Israelites and Israelite foreigners, you know, or telling them not to be around people that that worshiped other gods, man, because that was heavy back in that time in Corinth and Greece and all those other places, man. They were worshiping Jews or not Jews, but Zeus and, and all those Greek gods and all types of other stuff, man. Okay, so this scripture is talking about hanging out with people that don't believe, man, okay? It's not necessarily talking about um, who you deal with on a, on a relationship matter, okay? Because if we really get into it, man, you know, this, this is right here is going to tell you, you know, the Christian church will tell you that too. You know, I don't, you know, be unequally yoked. Well, what does unequally and yoked mean? Yoked together. Yoked together basically means to be tied to or joined unto, Okay, tied to or joined unto. And so if you go into it, you cross reference this, it's going to tell you a lot of different things. It's going to bring up um, back in that time. Okay, well, actually, before that, it's going to bring up something like this. Okay, Deuteronomy 22 and 10 Thou shalt not plow an ox with an ass together. Why not? Let's think about it. One's stronger than the other. They have different. They have differences. There's nothing similar about them, even though they both can pull and they both can plow. But you don't do that because you're going to have an uneven, an uneven field, an uneven situation. And the Most High is about balance. But also, let's get some understanding on this too. Okay, because when you go into this precept wise, where the rare right here unequally, it's going to go right into talking about not dealing with other nations okay you're not supposed to take you're not supposed to take their uh their wives or give their sons or give your sons unto them so the lord didn't want us dealing with other nations at that time okay you know of course now i mean it's still that way but of course now we've been scattered we've been scattered across and jake is dealt so of course you're gonna have us that are gonna look like the other nations anyway Okay, but let's get some real understanding on this. Okay, because this is Second Corinthians six and fourteen. But let's go. Let's go actually back this up. Okay, let's let's deal with this whole marriage thing. Okay, with this whole bad company situation. So we're gonna go to the First Corinthians. Okay, let's look at what Paul said back in Corinthians seven. All right, now this is talking about you know. Marriages and things like that. Sex. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 1. We're going to start at the top, but 12 is going to be the point. All right? So, now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless to avoid fornication. Okay, so let's get this understanding right here. That word fornication in this pretext means sexual wickedness, sexual madness. Okay? And we can go into it. When we go into the interlinear of it, you'll see what it says right here in the Greek. Pornia. Strong's G, 4202. Pornia. 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 Esau hit it for you one time. Okay, so it says illicit sexual intercourse, adultery, okay, fornication, homosexuality, lesbian, all of those things that A is giving you, okay? Also with B and C, so we get the point, right? Okay, let's go back to verse 2. It says, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. 
Okay, so we already know without having to go into that, a man can have more than one wife. So I don't have to break that down. Okay, but in the case that we have some people that are simple, I'll go ahead and get that. Okay, the explanation behind that is think about it. As the patriarchs, how many women did the children of Israel come out of? They didn't come out of just one. They came out of four different women. Okay, so if you look back at the of our forefathers of old, they had multiple women, multiple wives. Okay, in this concept, a wife having her own husband, meaning she is chosen and she is betrothed by a man, he may possibly have another wife. Okay, but he is still considered her husband. Got it? So now that we have the understanding of that, let's continue. Verse 3 Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence and likewise also unto the wife or also the wife unto the husband the wife hath not power over over of her own body but the husband and likewise also the body hath not power was of his wife okay so like your brothers i'm going to jump down to uh 6 it says but i speak this by permission and not of commandment okay so this is paul saying as a man i'm talking about this myself i'm speaking this by permission for i would have that all men were as myself but every man hath his proper gift of god one after this manner and another after that i say therefore unto the unmarried and widows it is good for them if they abide even as i because paul didn't deal with women all right uh, verse 8, I say, therefore, to the unmarried and the widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. <sighs> you Christians, you're thinking burning a lake of fire, okay? That's talking about burning with, with you know, desire on the inside. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, okay? So that's the key word. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband, because that was written in the law, okay, that there was no such thing as divorce, okay, until, the, you know, Israel kept going off and making Moses, you know, to have to write something in it. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, not, let not the wife depart from her husband, but if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife. Here is the point, finally. Okay. But to the rest, speak I. But to the rest, speak I. Not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Okay. So let's read that again. If a brother hath not had the wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Okay? Now you're like, okay, well that word Lord right there is not all capitalized like it's normally, you know, talking about in the uh, Old Testament. Okay, but you got to look at the linear in the New Testament in the Greek, and you drop down to this word kurios. Strong's G, 2962, Kurios. Kurios. Okay. It says, to he whom a person or thing belongs, the master, the possessor. And then you drop down here, and you see that it is the same word that we'll find in Matthew 21, or Matthew 1 and 20. Angel of the Lord. Okay. So if we go into that one, and we look in the inner linear. You're going to see the same thing, which drops down to um, the biblical usage number uh, letter C that says this title is given to the Most High or Yahweh Shah or the Messiah. OK, so now we know who that is talking about. Let's go back to the scripture that we had at hand. OK, let's go back to first Corinthians seventh chapter. Let's get some understanding. Verse 12, this is Paul speaking. He says, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him put not her, 
let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he believe, be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Okay? Because you got to also remember, you know, if you, Jake dealt with, at this time, or in the ancient times, Jake dealt with, you know, Israelite foreigners who didn't believe. People that were, you know, people that were of the uncircumcision. They were uncircumcised. Okay, and then you have the circumcision, which are the people who believed in the law, statutes, and the commandments of the Heavenly Father. So they were dealing with people that had, you know, that worshipped other gods. Okay, but just because they didn't believe didn't mean that you couldn't, you know, deal. This is not necessarily talking about, you know, other nations, dealing with other nations. But, you know, in this time frame, with us being scattered, we're in bondage, we're in captivity. Yes, we deal with the other nations. Okay, so it's twofold. You know, even if you go back and you look at the account of Moses, Moses married a Hamite woman. Okay, let's continue. Let's get the point. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not in bondage in such cases, but the Most High hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or thou knowest, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? So basically what he's saying, what Paul's saying is this, is how do you know? You could influence them to actually repent and come back to the law, statutes, and uh, the commandments of the Heavenly Father if they're Israelite, man or woman. You know what I'm saying? Just by, you know, you could influence them just by your ways. You know, they get under your vibration and they can come back into the faith. Okay. But as God has this uh, verse 17, but as God has distributed to every man, as Lord is called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. Okay. That's basically the point, brothers. Um, and that's all I got on this one. Fortunately, my lunch breaks up, so I'm done. But I'm going to end with that. And I hope this lesson has been edifying. And all through the spirit, I'm just going to give call. I'm going to say call all. Call hello, Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem, Rakal Kodash. Devil honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to you, humble and seared elect. Shalom.